Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. What's the most important sense of the five senses for any football player to have? I think most people would say without a doubt that the most important sense of the bunch is sight. Obviously, it's not smell, taste, or sound, and you can make a pretty compelling argument for touch. However, if you could only pick one, the most important one is probably the one involving your eyesight and your ability to see what's happening, for reasons that are pretty obvious. It's quite tough enough as it is to play a football game without being able to see, especially if you are a running back. Holes open and close so quickly. You have to follow your blockers and avoid tacklers. You need to be aware of where you are on the field. And you need to be able to see a whole bunch of other things taking place. If you can't see, well, you might as well throw in the towel and pack it in. Because your odds of succeeding are slim to none. Having a working set of eyes is a pretty big deal, especially at football's biggest stage. Well, the man you're watching right now, and the man that you've been watching this whole time, is Philadelphia Eagles running back Tom Woodishick. He was a very good player in the NFL for a long period of time. He played 10 seasons in the NFL, and while he spent his final season with the St. Louis Cardinals, he spent the first nine years of his career with the Philadelphia Eagles. He found the end zone 27 times, he made the Pro Bowl in 1968 after nearly recording a thousand yards rushing, he had multiple seasons where he was named an AP second team All-Pro, he had three seasons where he was ranked inside the top eight of the league in yards per carry, he had three straight seasons from 1967 to 69 where he had over a thousand yards from scrimmage, and in 1968 he had an amazing 1,275 yards from scrimmage which was the second most in all of the NFL, only behind eventual Hall of Famer Leroy Kelly of the Cleveland Browns. The Eagles were pretty bad throughout the 1960s, and you can learn more about a bizarre incident involving their ineptitude during that time by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, Woodishick was one of the few bright spots, as he was a very good player for a very long period of time, especially for an 8th round pick where teams were essentially just throwing darts against the wall and hoping that something stuck. And yet, despite his incredible career, where he was a highly successful running back and played in 115 games, so a pretty substantial sample size, the best performance of his career came, somehow, while he was blind. I don't know how it's possible. I don't know the science behind it. But somehow, the best scheme that a running back played, and a good one like that, was when he could not see. Remember that episode of Spongebob, where Spongebob drives at his best when he's completely blindfolded? Yeah, Tom Woodishick sort of did it first, and we're going to take a deep dive into this performance more than half a century later, in a game that you probably didn't know about before this video. Because this is the story behind what might just be Considering the circumstances, the craziest performance by a running back, or any player for that matter, in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles, and in the entire National Football League, throughout the entire 1967 season. Before I talk about how well Tom Woodishuk played during this game in question, we need some context to not just understand the importance of this game as it pertains to both the Eagles and to Woodishuk's career, but most importantly, why the heck Woodishuk, as in, the man you've been watching this whole time, was blind in the first place, and why he was even able to play. It's October 8th, 1967. It's week four of a brand new NFL season, and we've got a big game on our hands between the Atlanta Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles, with two bird teams going at it down in Atlanta. To say that this was a big game for the Eagles in the Capital Division, would be putting it lightly. 
The good news for the Eagles, and for a lot of teams in the NFL, was that in 1967, the league expanded the playoffs. So now, instead of two teams making it, four teams made it. The bad news, though, was that there were no wild cards. You had to win your four-team division to make it, or else you were out. And the even worse news for the Eagles was that despite a solid 2-1 start to the season, they were tied with Dallas and Washington atop the division. So they didn't have a whole lot of room for error, especially going up against what is widely perceived to be the worst team in football in the 0-3 Atlanta Falcons, who have allowed an NFL worst 99 points thus far and have the second worst point differential in the league at minus 61. The Eagles absolutely had to win this game in order to keep pace atop the capital division. And that meant that now more than ever, they needed a great game out of the man that you've been watching. And the main character in our bizarre story, Tom Woodashek. The bad news for Woodashek was that despite the fact that he was a pretty solid runner usually, and showed that off in the season opener against Washington, when he had 104 yards from scrimmage and found the end zone twice in an opening day 35-24 victory, he had been in a pretty bad slump as of late. In Philly's most recent two games, a 38-6 loss to the Baltimore Colts in Week 2 and a 34-24 win over the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 3, he played some of the worst football of his career, running the ball 21 times for just 43 yards, averaging a hair above 2 yards per carry. Said Woodashick on how poorly he played in that stretch, seeing as his struggles were eating him alive, I've been disturbed the last two weeks by my showings. I couldn't go to classes, and couldn't do much of anything except push myself in practice to get psyched up. He had to figure out some sort of way to bust this slump of his and get back on track and find the form that he had at the end of the 1966 season, when in Philly's final three games, the team went 3-0, and and Woodshick scored five touchdowns, including a touchdown in all three games, and had 316 yards from scrimmage or over 100 per game. The good news for Woodishik, though, was that he was going to get that chance against the Atlanta Falcons, and a pretty good chance, if I do say so myself. Part of it was because the Falcons were just absolutely inept defensively. Like I said before, they had already allowed 99 points through three games, coming out to 33 points per game, or more than a touchdown and change per quarter. It was a team that would end the season allowing more rushing yards than any team in football, allowing 2,139 yards over the 14-game season, or roughly 153 yards per game. And it was a team that, in their two most recent games, a 38-7 loss to the San Francisco 49ers and a 23-0 shutout loss to the Green Bay Packers, allowed 357 yards on the ground. But the main part was that the Eagles, at the running back position, were absolutely decimated with injuries, to the point where even if the coaching staff wanted to bench Woodashek or reduce his workload because of his struggles as of late, they couldn't. They had no other options. They were straight out of luck. By this point, heading into their game, they had a grand total of two healthy running backs. That was it. Harry Jones had a hip pointer injury. Harry Wilson tore his Achilles tendon. Tim Brown and Dan Barry were already ruled out with injuries. One of the healthy running backs was Tom Woodashek. The other one was Izzy Lang, but even that has an asterisk next to it, seeing as Lang was dealing with a pretty bad hamstring injury. Said Lang on why he came back to play through the injury, I have to, considering the situation. That's always a good sign. And on top of the hamstring injury, he had played through a bad ankle sprain, a bum knee, and a broken finger, and said that he planned to play hurt all season. So calling Lang a healthy running back is like calling watermelon doubts and chocolate syrup healthy for you. Yes, it's technically true. Watermelon is healthy. But it is extremely misleading. Woodashick was going to play this game, whether he was ready or not. He was going to get some increased playing time by default and was going to get a chance to prove himself and try to keep Philadelphia right in the title hunt. However, as if the Eagle running backs in 1967 couldn't get any more cursed, 
Sure enough, the one truly healthy running back had to get injured. Because of course he did. You see, like a lot of NFL players who are animal lovers and love dogs, Tom Woodishick had a dog of his own. This dog was a 90-pound German Shepherd named Stark, who, as Woodishick would describe, moves like a greyhound and is aptly named for his strength. And what do dogs like to do? They like to run around and roam free. You let a dog loose, and you watch the dog run. Hopefully, the dog runs in a controlled environment where nothing can hurt them. Ideally, a grass field would work. And hopefully, as was the case in 1967 with Worshik's dog, the dog does not run into a thicket of poison ivy. And I'm sure you might be able to see where this one is going. Because Woodishik, following his dog a few days before the game, ran straight into a ton of poison ivy. Which is obviously not good. And the reaction that Woodishik suffered from the poison ivy was really, really bad. Said Woodishik, It spread to my arms, then my feet, and finally, got to my eyes. You don't feel the effects of poison ivy right away. But by the time Saturday rolled around, as in... 24 hours before the game, oh man, he could feel it. He could feel it badly. When it got to his eyes, it didn't just make his eyes itch or hurt or anything like that. It made his eyes practically not work at all. Said Woodership, on Saturday, when I tried to move my eyes laterally or up and down, they took a while to focus. It was so bad that Woodishik wore sunglasses onto the team plane flying down to Atlanta. Not because he thought they looked cool or anything like that, but because without the glasses, he had no idea where the gate was at the airport. That's how bad his vision was. That's how poorly his eyes were calibrated. Tom Woodishik, quite literally, could not see. For all intents and purposes, he was a blind man, otherwise known today, as a referee. And yet, he was Philly's only real option at running back. The man that they had to put their faith in for this game against the Falcons, a must-win contest, because everyone else was hurt, was a running back who was not just coming off of two of the worst starts of his career, but was a running back who couldn't see because he ran into Poison Ivy with his dog. The man with no vision now had to go out there and play a position where vision is kind of important. How the heck is this going to work? Well, you're not going to believe this, but Tom Woodishik, despite the fact that he was basically blind, played lights out. To be fair, the rest of the team did as well, as you're watching from these highlights right now, as the Eagles absolutely waited on the Falcons, taking a 24-0 lead in the first quarter, going up by four possessions in the first 15 minutes of action, and never looking back, taking it by a final score of 38-7, in a game that wasn't even that close, seeing as the Falcons were down 38-0 late in the fourth quarter, before a garbage time touchdown at least prevented them from getting shut out. Philly had one of their best games ever, especially defensively, as Steve Sloan started the game under center for the Falcons, and put together, quite possibly, the worst start imaginable, and the worst start in NFL history. In the start, as in, the reason the Falcons were down 24-0 so early on, Sloan went 0-6 for with two interceptions and a passer rating of 0.0, which I mean at that point, you might as well have not showed up. This was the first and only start of his entire NFL career. What a way to do it. Philly for six turnovers, while not turning it over once themselves, and they truly were just in complete control of this contest the entire way. But the best player on the field? The top player in this blowout of a game? None other than Tom Woodishek, who despite being blind, somehow had the best game of his entire career. When all was said and done, as you're watching right now, Woodishek had 20 carries for 129 yards and a touchdown averaging 6.4 yards per carry, or more than triple what he was averaging over his last two games. His two-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter to make it 38-0 in 
was just the icing on the cake in a bloodbath. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that not only was this the best scheme of his career at that point, but it was the best scheme of what would eventually be an incredibly successful decade-long career in the NFL, period. At the time, the most rushing yards he ever had in a game was 105, which came during the regular season finale in 1966 against Washington. This 129-yard performance blew that out of the water. At the time, in a game where he had more than five carries, this average of 6.45 yards per run was the highest of his career. The previous high was 6.33 in a 1965 game against the Cardinals. And by the time his career was done, his career high for rushing yards in a game was 130, which came on November 16th, 1969 against the Los Angeles Rams. In a game that I talked about before on this channel. So you can learn more about that one by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, in that game, he averaged 5.2 yards per carry and the Eagles lost. In this one, the Eagles won and he had more than a full yard per carry greater than that. This was the most rushing yards that Woodashik ever had in a game in a winning effort. So yeah, I don't think it's crazy to say that this game against the Falcons was, amazingly enough, the best game of his entire career. And the man was blind when he did it and could not see a thing. What's crazy is that I don't know what it was, but this was not the last time that Tom Woodashik had to deal with Poison Ivy throughout his NFL career. In 1969, Woodashik missed a game against the New Orleans Saints to attend his mother-in-law's funeral, which was taking place at the exact same time of the game. And in weighing the decision of whether to play or not, he said that even if he could go and not attend the funeral, he wouldn't be able to play that well because he was dealing with a bad case of, you guessed it, Poison Ivy, which made his eyes swell really badly. Tom Woodashik and Poison Ivy went together as well as peanut butter and jelly. If I had a nickel for every time that Tom Woodashik's NFL career was impacted by Poison Ivy, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that this happens twice. Like I said earlier at the top of this video, Tom Woodashik went on to have a fantastic career in the NFL. When you end your career as an eighth round pick and play a decade in the league, recording nearly 5,000 yards from scrimmage, having a few seasons with 1,000 yards from scrimmage, and make it to a Pro Bowl, and receive some AP honors in the process, you absolutely did something right. And today, Tom Woodashik is remembered pretty fondly by Eagles fans, especially during some otherwise dark years. But maybe, if Woodashik's 1967 season was any indication, vision is overrated. Maybe you don't necessarily need to see in order to be a good running back. At least, Tom Woodashik didn't because if you want to know how good Wurtishik was, or how bad the Falcons were as an expansion team in the 1960s, Tom Wurtishik had the best scheme of his career with no eyesight. And I can't really believe it. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.